Travis Wing Goods all. So I've uh, done videos for years now and I've warned you of the dangers of the church and the dangers of psychology. Psychology is a fraudulent science, it's therefore not a science. It's purposely designed to hurt and harm other people. As uh, bullies in school, for example, what do they do? They target you and then name call you and then they extort from you and uh, they continue to do it, escalate if they continue to keep getting away with it without adults stepping in to stop the kid and uh, they eventually by repetition wear you down until you eventually believe it because you're just a kid you've got no adults to step in and save you I saw on the Fox 13 News Utah about a <sighs> breaks my heart a little girl who committed suicide here in Utah. There's too many of them. Mormons are bullies. And they are adopting psychology to enhance their bullying. As Mormon apologists use psychological tactics, which are called fallacy arguments, which is why psychology is a fraud. They cannot use sound argument. They cannot use logical argument. They cannot follow the Socratic method. And therefore, in all of the fields of science, they are recognized as a fraud. And yet, our government, especially here in Utah, have elevated them to expert status. They have put them in our school system. And if you need an example of how evil they are, the 1980s, they were trying to get gay people as clients by telling their parents that they can electroshock therapy them, conversion therapy, and cure them of being gay. Uh, that was an utter and inhumane failure. Yet the state of Utah just canceled it in 2021 and now they're talking about bringing it back up again thank God it didn't make the ballot but in the 1990s they started to make a shift as they realized it was another failure and inhumane as everywhere but Mormon Utah stopped it and uh, they began to uh, Im have those who are gay and lesbian embrace being gay and lesbian and as we now know much more LGBTQIAPO plus this was psychology who did that because they wanted clients and so instead of bullying gays and threatening electro shocks they were now saying you are gay and we're going to help you accept yourself and uh, all these bullies will help you through it will console you and so they're still getting uh, the gay community as clients but their shift has changed that doesn't make them good they're still evil because they're using you to make their living they're using you as a commodity that's how evil psychology is and Psychiatrists are the drug pushers for the pharmaceutical companies to perform human experimentations using drugs. And they have no Hippocratic Oath. Doctors, medical doctors, real science medical doctors, 
have a Hippocratic Oath to do no harm. Psychologists? Pfft, no. They can torture all they want. And in fact, the CIA, you know, bloody Gina, is she still around? Or did she go into hiding now that Trump is gone? Uh, they uh, uh, utilized, they partnered with psychologists from World War II's Nazi Germany. They gave them asylum here in the United States, and there's been declassified documentation, such as MK Ultra and others, that uh, they've been using them for. And, uh, and now look at us. The art of war talks about dividing and conquering. And you do that by infiltrating the culture and getting the culture to divide and conquer themselves first so that you can then go in and annihilate them. Well, guess what they're doing to us now? We're divided in many different ways. Pro-life, pro-choice, liberal, conservative, and religion, which is a spectrum, but when it's Christianity, it's, you know, it's our way or the other. And, uh, and so the church, with Holland especially, is now preaching acceptance of psychology and knowing the danger and threat of psychology that should concern everybody but that's why the church is doing it and and so if you excuse me never seen the manchurian candidate either the original with frank sinatra or the reboot or read the book you'll understand that psychology is a part of that as well so when I talk about Manchurian Candidate, that's what I'm referring to, is being psychologically manipulated to be a criminal for others. And for Mormons, the church makes you a Manchurian Candidate to commit crimes to defend the church and attack other people. Mormons are not capable of being sound in defending the church. They cannot use the Socratic method to defend the church. They can only use ad hominems, which is the abusive name-calling, bullying, attacking a person's character. And they cannot use any sound argument. And the reason for this is because Brigham Young started it, and Nelson keeps perpetuating it even more so, that the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith's history are literal. And by doing that, they automatically lose any argument. And so to protect Mormons, they've taught you to use what's called a spiritual witness. That when you read the scriptures, when you pray, when you go to church, when you go to the temple, you have to feel the spirit and that feeling is a witness of truth and now you know the truth and now you don't need to worry about actually studying and reading and figuring out what the grammatical termination or grammatical structure uh, content is talking about you don't need to comprehend the book of mormon you don't need to comprehend what joseph smith is talking about because you got a spiritual witness you're dumb, dumb, dumb. The church has made you dumb. Purposely. They set you up. And so those who leave the church are the ones who recognize that it's not correct literal history. And all of a sudden, the spiritual witness doesn't defend them. And they leave. But the church uses that against... Mormons and ex-Mormons to say, well, they apostatized. They're Korahor. They stop studying the scriptures. They stop reading or praying. They stop going to church. Stop going to the temple. Stop paying tithing. Tithing. Protection racket. Crime. Turns marriages into sex trafficking. And, uh, and so Mormons who have this 
fully Manchurian candidate brainwashing, uh, therefore are deniers of truth. Reality isn't real, truth isn't true, if it doesn't conform and comply with what they feel. And uh, this is a similar tactic of psychology. And so, uh, there was a Richard DeWitt, who is a fake channel name, because uh, he would be the famous philosopher and historian otherwise. And he's got better things to do than come to my channel and use a different field of study than what he's professionally known for to attack me on a small sampling videos. <laughs> small sampling is a fallacy argument. That's what uh, is being done here. So it's obviously a Mormon who went to the University of Utah and uh, was required to have his book and thinks that psychology and philosophy are the same field of study. <laughs> Again, spiritual witness, anything goes. And so now uh, he repeated, regurgitated, see that's repetition, over and over and over and over and over again until the victim of the bullying name calling submits and agrees with the bully and the name calling. And uh, on uh, just two videos though, uh, LDS Church Prophets frustrated over failure to silence Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, LDS Church Prophets feel, I had to change that because the original title was different. And as I was loading it, I went, wait a minute, I should put feel, shouldn't I? <laughs> feel, Travis Wayne Goodsell is the greatest threat. And, and so he's not listening to the video that's still got 50 minutes left to uh, upload. Which you're going to get this after that, obviously, and which will be after dinner, it looks like, too. And so you won't hear his comments, which he plagiarized. <laughs> he, it's like he took it from a book or an online site, I guess, to do a copy and paste. And he, he did it claiming the bullying from psychology of paranoid personality disorder. And he's wrong on multiple counts because, as I tell you in here, uh, psychology was involved in my incarceration. That's why I know they're evil. They tried to murder me and almost succeeded in 2015, which I didn't mention that part, but I did put the picture in for you. The drugs resulted in uh, kidney failure and I was rushed to the emergency room one day after church uh, to uh, find out that uh, the drugs were the cause of the kidney failure. And I almost died because the emergency doctor gave me the wrong antibiotics and I was running 104 fever. Uh, if Karen wasn't there for me, I would have died. And uh, yeah, it was, dear God, he called three days later in a panic, worried that I was dead because he gave me the wrong antibiotics. But uh, yeah, this was all the church is doing. I got the receipt. I've showed you the receipt in other videos. But again, this is the danger of making a conclusion based on a limited number of videos of mine. And Mormons don't get it. They don't understand. There's more to the story than I tell in the short videos that I do. And even in this long video, I missed some stuff that I had to share with you here in this one. But uh, Dr. Cohn from the University of Utah was the one who was ordered and paid by the church to recommend to the judge that I be locked up for six years of my life. And she didn't give a diagnosis. She can't. You can't do it in two hours, make a diagnosis. No credible psychologist can do that. And, and so she said, might be this, 
might be that, but it was more in terms of schizophrenia and a spectrum uh, disorder than it was a paranoid personality disorder. And so, again, a professional in the field did not render the diagnosis that this Richard DeWitt is making. And then, uh, uh, then if you knew about these, you would understand that they're made up. Because what they're doing is he lists the outward appearance of a person. All of psychological diagnoses are from an outward observation. This is why all you do is you sit on a couch with the psychologist and you talk about your feelings. And then they diagnose you with their opinion. Not a, 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 a standard science measurement. They don't do theory testing with logical argument, Socratic method, and uh, sound arguments to test for causation. See, medical doctors are supposed to be checking for causation. That's why they do x-rays, MRIs, blood testing, other stuff like that when you go in to see the doctor for a pain you have. Because uh, if the doctor just says, oh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how does it make you feel? It hurts. But 1 to 10. Then you know that they're a quack and they're not there to help you. And you should get a different doctor who will do his Hippocratic Oath and do no harm. But, uh, uh, and so I, I hope this is clear. To call somebody a paranoid personality disorder, a bipolar disorder, schizophrenic, or any other uh, diagnosis that they create are all name calling. Because again, back in the 80s, they were calling people retarded. They were calling people mentally disabled, mentally retarded. And of course, conservatives back in those days took that and went, yeah, you're mentally retarded. You're retarded. You too are retarded. Just like with when gays were being perpetuated uh, by the Christian alt-right and psychologists, as you have the... Uh, People saying, oh, you listen to music, you're gay. Oh, you wear those kind of clothes, you're gay. Oh, you like that, you're gay. You do that, you're gay. So there were bullies. Bullies love psychologists because they're the same. Psychologists are bullies, bullies are bullies, and the bullies caught on to what the psychologists were doing. And uh, the rest of the world didn't, especially the government, apparently. And so, uh, he's name-calling me. He's not given a professional opinion. It's the wrong profession. But uh, it's the wrong claim from what Dr. Cohn gave me. Which she didn't really give me. She just said, it might be and it might be this. See, the six years, I refused to talk about my feelings. And so I was, I was punished for that the manner in which they treated us is that you had to conform and comply go to the specific groups that they forced you to go to and go into therapy and then you would rise up and level and as you rise up and level you get more privileges you know like food clothing and if you didn't you didn't get those privileges you can't go to the Mormon church, for example, unless you were a, a third level. It was actually, what they had it was the in, introductory level, and then A, B, C, and D. D is the highest. They're reversing the school system grading as a reverse psychology method. 
and so a sea level was required to attend church and uh, eventually they realized that it's kind of against the law to deny people access to religion and so they allowed bees to go as long as they were accompanied by staff assuming staff was available to go and so yeah oftentimes it had to have been a Mormon staff member who was forced to work on a Sunday because of the forced requirement to get any kind of job in the state of Utah lots of businesses struggle to get staffing because Mormons don't want to work on Sunday but uh, I, yeah the, you know it, it's it's frustrating to explain this to you guys when there are evil people like this fake Richard DeWitt because he's not doing it as a professional criticism he's not doing it to help me he's doing it specifically to hurt and to harm and to humiliate me publicly because he thinks that I don't hold all comments for review and this is why I do because there are evil people who are bullying me to hurt me and harm me and ruin my reputation because they cannot defend the church soundly they cannot use any logical arguments they have to use fallacy to defend the church because the church is not literally true the Book of Mormon is not literal Joseph Smith's history is not literal and so I hope you understand that and we'll close with scripture because like I said I don't give my own doctrine all of this comes from Joseph Smith or the Book of Mormon so yes Joseph Smith is the one who's talked about this and it was in the interim after the first vision vision not literal history but the church keeps pushing literal history didn't they but they're ignoring the angelic visit now because I exposed them on YouTube because now what do they do do they keep perpetuating that it's Moroni and that Joseph Smith was wrong <laughs> or do they confess that the footnote that, that, the, that the guys put in the Joseph Smith papers led them to uh, oopsie that was a breakthrough video of, of the Danites further involvement with tampering jo with Joseph's church or uh, are they going to come out and confess that it's Egyptian gold plates that ties to the York Rites Knights Templar which Joseph Fielding Smith senior or Joseph Smith senior was in in Canandaigua New York in 1826 when William Morgan was there working on a book that didn't get finished well but uh, uh, let's see this is the Methodist preacher uh, let's see Great bitter persecution 14 year old doomed to the necessity of scanty scant scant scanty maintenance yeah I, I'm like Joseph Smith in so many ways I uh, read all of his stuff like the King Follett discourse and so I learned to develop his personality from his writings I became Joseph Smith in that sense not possessed by his spirit which other people have done <laughs> oh dear God cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs but yeah the psychologists tell them that that's what they've done that's what's going on and they believe it and they perpetuate it there's a couple of guys who do that here because of psychologists um, yep so he was mad persecution all manner of evil against me falsely for saying I was led in my heart to say okay here we go uh, and though I was hated and persecuted for saying that I had translated or deciphered paleo Hebrew shown that Joseph Smith is a translator yet it was true 
And while they were persecuting me, reviling me, and speaking all manner of evil against me falsely for, say, for so saying, I was led to say in my heart, why persecute me for telling the truth about Joseph Smith? I have actually deciphered Paleo-Hebrew. I've got the published books. His personality disorder name-calling says that all that is fake news. You can't go online and find my publications. You can't go to academia. You can't go to Amazon. I didn't do any of it. It's all fake news. I didn't sue the church in the federal courts. You can't Google search Travis Wayne Goodsell v. COP or Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and find the cases in which I was rejected. It's all fake news. Nothing is real. I'm lying to you. The pictures are fake. I made them up. I've, I don't have that ability, but they're fake. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, let's see. That was not it. That was not it. Where is it? Ah. It's where he says, uh, try to reclaim me in an affectionate manner. Oh, there it is. It's in uh, further down. Okay, in verse 28, uh, let's see, having been forbidden to join any of the religious sects of the day, he was kicked out of the Methodists, and being of very tender years, being persecuted by those who have ought to have been my friends, Mormons, and to have treated me kindly, and if they supposed me to have been to be deluded, there's mentally ill. I was in Joseph Smith's day. That's what people called other people as name calling for psychology purposes. Deluded. You're crazy. You're deluded. You're a witch. Burn you. You weigh more than a duck. Or less than a duck. I think it was. Uh, to have endeavored in a proper and affectionate manner to have reclaimed me. What are Mormons doing? They're not doing this either. So, like I told you, Joseph Smith is prophesying. The man like Moses. The two are sympathetical. As Second Nephi chapter 3 tells us, Joseph is the man like Moses. The man like Moses is the man like Moses. And the man like Moses is a Mormon in the future. Which is right now, and he's in Utah. As I've been telling you. And he and Joseph are the same. And so the video I did about uh, the two um, the two locations in western New York, the Ezekiel prophecy fulfillment, yeah. yep. the Grove of Trees, the same. That's why Joseph Smith said the Grove of Trees. It wasn't because it was literal. It was prophesying, learning of the Jews, right from the Book of Mormon. tells us it is. It's not literal history. So, yay! Mormons are evil and we're all gonna die. I should probably add more on uh, schizophrenia uh, because uh, this is a more atrocious one that was used on me. It uh, obviously is a name calling and is based on the psychologist's opinion and beliefs. It's all outward judging judging by the outward appearance, which is condemned in the New Testament. And even though it's translated incorrectly, but the, it's still the same concept. You're not supposed to judge by the outward appearance. It's a fallacious argument as well. And uh, it was used in World War II's Nazi Germany. And remember, it was Dr. Kohn, Nazi Germany, who the Holocaust of the Jews, Dr. Cohn, Jews, see how evil the church is, and uh, uh, they were performing human experimentation on the Jews, torturing them with all manner of torturing, and prior to the official World War II, 
they were locking the Jews up in mental asylums to perform the human experimentations through the psychologists, claiming that they had schizophrenia and therefore they would be treated. But it was all under the guise of human experimentation. So when World War II came around, then they were free to join with the SS or the Gestapo, whoever they were doing it with, to uh, escalate it further and advance it more as they had more clients, victims. And so uh, the uh, Ilsa is the most famous, infamous, of the abusers of psychological and, and even medical torture done to the Jews and other captives, as uh, many movies have come out about her. And uh, they're horrifying. And, uh, and so, uh, despite the Nuremberg trials and psychologists claiming that that needs to stop, it was perpetuated by Russia in the 60s as they did it to political opponents and uh, locked them up into asylums to torture them, uh, claiming that they had sluggish schizophrenia. It was the same diagnosis, but they were just given it a different name. They were saying it was slow onset schizophrenia. Uh, schizophrenia is not supposed to occur after your 20s. So if I was 38 and she's saying I have it, no. She lied. That's why uh, she said maybe. is because uh, it could come back to bite her. And she was being ordered and paid to do it. And that's why she also didn't make an official diagnosis. And uh, she was being threatened. But she was kind of willing. Because she was my probation officer when I got freed in 2014 and uh, was not going to free me. I told her I want my freedom. And she looked me with an evil look, saying, I'm never gonna let you go. And uh, it took her boss to let me go. And, uh, and, uh, and so the whole concept is just wrong altogether as it's being used here against me and against others in Utah. So, yay, they've even got a, a, a mental health court now so that uh, they don't go through the regular court process, the due process now. Because now we're guilty, so we go through the court automatically. It's just like a druggie. They're automatically guilty, so now they go through the drug courts. And because it's not federal, they don't get pardoned by Biden. Andrew. And I can just keep going, because there's so much more to add to this. Uh, Stanley Smith Stevens, a Mormon, born in Utah, became a psychologist who developed what is known as the dichotomous and non-dichotomous categorization of name-calling for behaviors, outward observations. He took the hard science categorization of plants and animals and turned it into behavioral. And that's a fallacy argument. You can't do that. And, uh, and thus he set forth the categorization that we now have today. He did his majority of his work during World War II in Colorado. And uh, I, so when you are aware of Facebook, when they ask you about which kind of princess, Disney princess are you, and the questions are only four, and if your answer is not among the four, you're wrong. You have to conform and comply to the four because they're setting you up to name call you 
and by name calling you, they then f therefore treat you in accordance with your name call and drug you in accordance with your name call and uh, go from there. In grade school in California, uh, our teacher gave us a color test where we took a test and we had only four answers of which I'm like, uh, none of these are the right answer. I don't look to see my answer. But nonetheless, I figured it out that if I just change the answer, I'm a different color. And uh, yeah, that's what it was. It was. It was designed for teachers to bully their own students by turning the students into one of the four behavioral categories. And we kids were calling ourselves by the, the different colors, unaware of what it actually meant. And so the bullies were the reds, the, uh, the sarcastic abusers were the yellows, and uh, the passive submissive obedience were the white and blues. And uh, it's changed, as I see online, other people have used different colors. But this is why McDonald's uses yellow, uh, talking about have being happy, feeling happy, as they associate color with a feeling, all from psychology. So women, when you're dressing for the day, you choose a specific outfit, you choose a specific color based on your feeling that morning. You've been brainwashed. As much as you look awesome, love to have your picture. But uh, I, that's the reality, and uh, it's abuse, and it's destroying our nation, tearing us apart to destroy us.